So today we're going to be talking about your embroidery hoop. Got one here. Comes in two pieces. And I'll show you all how to work your way around an embroidery hoop. We'll be using the silks again because generally that's what you use, not sewing cotton. And I'm going to show you how to do the stitch on cotton. And again, we're going to work with some felt. It's just the easiest way to show you. Uh, plus, we get to use the felt to make things later on in the series when we make the products. Right, so let's get started. See you on the other side. Okay, here we go. So, I'm going to pop that to one side. The silks, the hearts are ready. I won't need that quite yet, so we'll put that to one side. What I am going to show you is the embroidery hoop. So your embroidery hoop comes in two parts. They are usually both like this, wood. What I've done with this one is I've taken some cotton binding, usually I think I use, or just some cotton tape, and I've wrapped it round and round and round. It just softens when you trap the cotton between both and it doesn't give you such hard lines. Now, something else on this outer one is a little screw that makes it wider or tighter. Okay, so we need it a little bit looser for now because we are going to put this one underneath the cloth there we go. Straighten it out nicely. Now I have ironed my cloth first. It's very difficult to iron out creases afterwards. Now we're going to place it over the top. And see, it looks a bit like a drum. But it's not tight enough because as soon as I start to work on there, it'll work loose. You see how that is loose? And what we need to do is tighten it up here. So I'll just reposition that again. Because as you can see, that's what would happen if you didn't tighten it up, you see. It would all come undone. So, place it over the top. And then I need to get to this bit and tighten it up. Right, position my hands in such a way that I need to tighten it up. Oh, I always do it the loose way first. There we go. It's tightening up now. And just pull it through a little bit so it gets a bit like a drum yeah it can still do with being a bit tighter because what we don't want to happen is for when you start stitching and it all comes away so tighten it up oh it's fiddly that's better now the other thing to say is you want it just right really it's a bit fiddly because you don't want it too tight that you can't get a needle in and out but on the other hand you don't want it too loose and it comes out right i think we've got a happy medium now so there we go a nice pristine start so we're going to choose our colors now can you remember from last time and if you didn't i'll show you again so don't worry so we're going, we've got an end in the silk and the easiest way is to just pull it once, pull it twice and that should give you a nice easy length to work with. So we're going to snip that off, get, pop that to one side and generally we work with two threads at once and if you can remember from last time or if in fact you saw last time you will remember that it's made up of six threads. Now, if you just find two and pull them out at the same time, odds are it's going to knot up your thread. So I find the easiest way is to isolate one thread. And when you've done that, you hold it in your finger and your thumb Hold on to the rest, not too tight that it can't move, but tight enough it's not going to go anywhere. And just pull all the way until it comes out. So that's one thread. And now you straighten it all off so it doesn't 
get in a knot and you want to find one more. There we go, isolate one more, I've got it. And same thing again. So holding on to the rest and just firmly pulling it through. Then evening out the rest because next time when you want to take two more, it won't be in a tangle. So we'll put that to one side. Now we want to bring one thread and two threads together. And then just straighten them out and you can see they're both together. I'm going to bring in my needle now. Remember that an embroidery needle, the eye is usually quite long. You see, it's not a tiny little thing. And the easiest way is to bend your cotton over the needle, take it out, and then take the eye of the needle to the cotton. Give it a wiggle, and there it is. Took no time at all. So we're all threaded up and ready to go. So what we're going to do, I'll do it down here because we don't want to start in the middle, is come up from underneath. Now, when you're pulling it through, be mindful that you don't want it to come all the way. So just leave a little bit there and you can hold that with your finger. There we are. Now you can see your finger, you know where they are. And then you want to do a little stitch just to hold it in place. Keep your finger on that loose one. Go over it a couple of times. There we go. So it's in place and ready to go. Now we're going to do a running stitch. So we're going to come up and go down at more or less the same distance. And you can do it like this if you want. Just this is why the material doesn't have to be as tight as a drum because you need to be able to manipulate your needle through there. So we're going to go again, down, and then up. We'll do a few. There we are. All the way along. Right, there we go. So I think that's long enough to give an example of this stitch. And then I'll just finish it off underneath. We're gonna go over this last stitch twice. And there we are. And down again. And I'm going to finish off underneath by just catching it. And doing a securing stitch through that loop. There we go now. So for this example, we're not, I'm going to use a different color. Next, so, oops, it's happened to these scissors. So we won't need this color. So I'm going to thread another one and then you can come back to me when I've got my different color <coughs> ready. Right, so here we are. I've introduced my second color. I'm thinking about it, it's a pale pink. It's a bit unfortunate because the cloth is pale pink, but uh, I think you'll still be able to see it. So I've come from beside it now. I've started my cotton off underneath and I am going to go underneath that first stitch. There we go, and pull the rest through. Then I'm going to go to the bottom of the next stitch, underneath, through the stitch and pull it through. Now, this is not going through the cloth. It is merely going underneath the stitch without piercing the cloth and coming up through. Can you see that? Let me bring it closer to the camera. Underneath and then pull it through. 
Now this stitch is called a whipped running stitch. There we go. Whipped running stitch. So it's not difficult, but as you can see and appreciate, it's quite effective. And it's a nice stitch to do edging with. So I'm just going to show you an example of that. I'm going to take that down. So this is our, oops, cotton's got, the silks have got caught. There we go. Sometimes that happens. You just have to untangle it. There we go. And underneath. So all I'm going to do is secure that underneath. And that is a quick example of a whipped running stitch. So we'll just make a securing knot through the loop. There we go. And then I can snip that off. And then we'll keep this hoop to one side and add other stitches to it as we go along. So a whipped running stitch. So put that to one side. So here's the felt heart. I love my felt hearts. So on this one, I've already done the running stitch all the way around. Now it's not right on the edge because ultimately when we finish decorating this side, I want to stitch it to this side so we can make a stuffed heart. You can see how it fits together. I will probably stitch it together on the outside using that space here. So you don't want to do your decorative stitches too close to the edge. And as this is a nice edging stitch, it sets up the framework for all the decoration that can be done inside. So on this occasion, because we're not going to see the underside of the work, I can use a knot. It's the only time I use a knot with embroidery is when I'm not going to be able to see underneath. So I'm going to introduce the cotton next to the running stitch. And just like before, let me bring it closer to the camera, we are going underneath and pulling gently. And the next one, underneath. Trying not to catch anything, just underneath, take your time, and this is how you get the whipped running stitch. And then I can do that all the way along. See how far, there we go. So it's quite simple, it's a lovely easy stitch to do, and you can use whatever colours you want. In fact, you could probably do a couple of rows in different colours and see how you get on. There we are. Look. I really like that. Looks like a candy cane. Type, type of things you... Hang on your tree. In fact, these little stuffed decorated hearts would be great as Christmas tree hangers, baubles. Could make a whole set. It's very quick stitch as well. Oops, it coming up to that. Just hold on to this so it doesn't rush up your stitches and then give yourself a bit more to work with. Yeah. Now I'm gonna, I've kept going until I could show you this because I don't want it to spoil as it goes around the corner. I'm just going to do an extra little bit there so it doesn't pull. Then I can turn my corner. There we go, you see? And it stays in place a bit instead of unravelling and not following its line. You see, if I hadn't have done that securing stitch there, 
what would have happened is this pale pink would have probably crossed and taken off the corner. So you have to think about just little things like that, but there's always an easy solution. There we are. And you have to think about what other things you can put inside the de decorated heart then. Because after all, this is just the edge. I think it needs a few other stitches to decorate it. And like we did last time, we put all those little flowers in the middle, didn't we? You have to think, well, I tell you what you could do. You could use broken bits of jewellery as well. I've done that in the past. That would definitely bling it up a Christmas tree. Right, so I've come to the end stitch now and I'm just going to go in that first stitch again and then through to the other side. So this is the only time that it's actually gone through to the other side. All the way round, it, it has just been on the surface going underneath the stitch. Oh, even there, we only secured it to the corner. So now we just do a nice securing stitch underneath. One that doesn't go all the way through, remember. We don't want to see this on the other side. Put it through the loop. There we go, that's caught it down. And then snip it off. And there we have one decorated heart. Right, so there you go. So we've put our cotton into an embroidery hoop and we've used it to start our stitch sampler. So the stitch sampler will be making an appearance in the next video as well. I think we'll keep it going and we'll just build up our stitches and then it's a good reference. Also with the hearts, I've got two hearts now that we can use as nice fronts and we'll do something lovely with them in the product section. So see you next time and don't forget to like and subscribe these videos on YouTube and it just works better that way and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.